space, which is known for being the riskiest and most difficult area. There are so many challenges associated with spaceflight, including technical, financial, and regulatory hurdles, and so on. However, the return on investment is undeniably substantial, with the potential to significantly impact our understanding of the universe and improve life on Earth. Which brings us to SpaceX, Elon Musk's space company, who's working to overcome these challenges and push the boundaries of what is possible in spaceflight. The company always tries to find innovative and creative approaches to spaceflight and has developed many groundbreaking solutions to some of the biggest challenges in the industry. One of the most recent genius solutions is to save 33 super heavy booster engines. This is the situation. For initial test flights, SpaceX will use 33 Raptor engines to power the super heavy first stage and six on the Starship upper stages. So for each test flight that either ends in the ocean with a fiery landing or with a vehicle that can't be reused, the company will potentially lose 39 Raptor engines. That is a staggering amount of engines both in terms of cost and lost production time. But will Musk accept the risk? The answer is a definite no. Not short of ideas or technological innovations, Elon Musk is seriously considering using the Starship's launch tower to catch Super Heavy before it lands on the ground. An unprecedented and fantastical idea, but it will become a useful reality for the following three main reasons. First, Catching the Starship in mid-air using a catching mechanism like the Super Heavy Launch Tower arm has the potential to reduce the amount of damage sustained by the spacecraft during landing, as it avoids the need for the 33 Super Heavy engines to perform a full landing burn, which can create a significant amount of debris and cause damage to the surrounding area. Traditional landing methods can create a significant amount of debris and cause damage to the launch pad, which can be costly and time time-consuming to clean up and repair. By catching the spacecraft mid-air, SpaceX can avoid these issues and potentially reduce the cost of spaceflight. The second factor is that catching the Starship in mid-air can enable SpaceX to recover the spacecraft in a way that is both safe and efficient. Traditional landing methods can be challenging and require a large landing zone, which may not be available in some locations. By catching the spacecraft in mid-air, spacecraft, I'm sorry, SpaceX can minimize the need for a large landing zone and increase increase the number of potential landing sites. And lastly, catching the Starship in mid-air is an important step towards achieving SpaceX's goal of developing a fully reusable launch system. By recovering the spacecraft in a way that minimizes damage and simplifies the landing process, SpaceX can reduce the need for costly refurbishment and increase the frequency of launches. Just one Starship flight is not enough to create a Martian city. To achieve his most ambitious targets, Musk needs to launch the Starship three times per day at least. That, in turn, means it has a chance of achieving its goal of a city on Mars by 2050. But keep in mind, this is just a chance, a probability. Nothing is set in stone. Who knows? Could be coming earlier or later. Only time will tell. So now we have a pretty good idea why Musk is doing this. But now we get to try and figure out how it's going to work, and that's the fun part. Musk gave details about how it would work on August 30th of 2021. The booster will likely use two pins for lifting and catching. Musk noted that maybe it's better to modify grid fins to take more load, suggesting the plants are still in motion. The ship would sport something to flip out from the leeward side of the ship. Musk added that maybe it's part of forward flaps, but probably not. Tank treads on the arm will slide the booster out to line up with the orbital launch pad, ready to fly again. The plan marks a sharp departure from SpaceX's other rocket reuse efforts. For the semi-reusable Falcon 9, the first stage booster either returns to Earth on a land-based launch pad, or an autonomous drone ship in the sea. The rocket fires its engines during descent to come to a stop on the pad. 
So why not use this method instead? Because, as Musk suggested on August 13th, using the tower to catch the booster and ship means that neither of them needs landing legs to support themselves as they return. The Starship will only require legs for missions that land on Mars or other planets until there is local infrastructure. Note that the Falcon 9 boosters used their legs to support themselves as they came in to land on those drone ships. On August 4th, Musk also suggested that the tower could move the rocket into position. A few months later, Musk published the first official visualization of what SpaceX's plans to catch super heavy boosters might look like in real life. Based on the simulated telemetry shown in the visualization, Super Heavy's descent to the landing zone appears to be considerably gentler than the suicide burn SpaceX routinely uses on Falcon. By decelerating as quickly as possible and making landing burns as short as possible, Falcon saves a considerable amount of propellant during recovery. Extra propellant that, if otherwise required, would effectively increase Falcon's dry mass and decrease its payload to orbit. In the super heavy catch Musk shared, the booster actually appears to be landing, just on an incredibly small patch of steel on the tower's mechazilla arms instead of a concrete pad on the ground. Aside from a tiny bit of lateral motion, the arms appear motionless during the catch, making it more of a landing. Further, super heavy is shown decelerating rather slowly through out the simulation and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. The challenge would be as if SpaceX for some reason made Falcon boosters land on two elevated ledges about as wide as car tires. That slow, cautious descent and even slower touchdown may be necessary because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be to land on a pair of hard points with inches of lateral margin for error and maybe a few square feet of usable surface area. Aside from demanding accurate rotational control, even the slightest lateral deviation would cause the booster to topple off the pillars and, in the case of Super Heavy, fall about a hundred feet into concrete where it would obviously explode. And so, this is how Musk is building the Mechazilla. It's just his way of taking rocket engineering to the next level, and at the same time, making the Starship even cheaper to build, even more reusable, and even more efficient. Mechazilla is just the first of its kind. There is at least one more of these towers going in at Starbase at some point in the next year. We know that SpaceX is building two more at its launch pad at Cape Canaveral, Florida that will be even more capable than the towers at Starbase. And then eventually, Musk's goal is to build Mechzilla towers on Mars that would support the massive fleet of a thousand starships that he imagines flying between our two planets. Eventually, a fully functioning starbase on Mars with the ability to produce super heavy boosters would use their Mechazilla tower to launch fully stacked starships on deep space missions to Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, or even places beyond our solar system. And that just about covers it for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And so for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.